Hello friends, welcome to SQL with Manoj. Today we'll see how to install SQL Server 2016 CTP2. Microsoft recently released CTP2 version of SQL Server 2016. And to download SQL Server 2016 CTP2 setup, you can visit my previous video of downloading SQL Server 2014. The steps are similar, the website is same, and you will see one more link of SQL Server 2016 CTP2. Or you can visit my blog. Here is my blog, Microsoft SQL Server 2016, public preview, CTP2 available, download it now. First link is to register yourself and then download the CTP2 evaluation version. And here is another direct download link where you don't have to register and you can just directly click on these two files and download the setup. Now as I've already downloaded the setup, let me go to the folder from where we can install SQL Server. So here's the setup and you execute the setup file. Okay. Here is the SQL Server installation window. You have to click on the installation and then the first link for new SQL Server standalone installation or add features to an existing installation. So you have to click on this. So here is the setup window. So as this is a CTP2 version, so you don't have an option to specify the product key. This version is free to download for evaluation of 180 days. So just go ahead with this, click on next, accept the license agreements. Okay, so Windows firewall warning, so no need to worry about this. Click next. So here are two options. One is the feature installation where you can choose the features that you want to install and one is with default. It will install everything. So I'll go ahead with the first option. Click next. Okay, here is our feature page. I'll expand it so that we can see all the features at once. So here are the features that we'll select. Database Engine Services. Then I'll select the full text search. Maybe I'll work with some uh, full text uh, semantic searches. There is a new feature that is added in SQL Server 2016. Polybase Query Service for External Data will also select it. And here's the description about it. Polybase technology is to query the Hadoop non-relational data from SQL Server by using standard T-SQL statements. So you can use the standard T-SQL statements to query the Hadoop non-relational data here. I'll skip the analysis services, reporting services thing, everything. I'll just choose the client tools, connectivity, SDK, documentation, management tools basic. This is your SSMS from where you will write the queries and execute them and SQL client connectivity SDK. After choosing these options, so this is going to take around 4 GB of your space on your C drive. I'll just click next. Okay, so here we cannot proceed next because the Oracle JRE, the Java Runtime Environment, uh, this thing is failed and it is asking us to have this environment installed. I click on the fade link, it gives me this message that the Oracle JRE Java Runtime Environment can be downloaded from here or you can go to my blog where I have mentioned about it. Here, the Oracle JRE update 5.1 or higher is required so you can directly install the Java Runtime Environment setup from here. The link takes us to the Oracle JRE download page. So from here you can download the JRE. You can just click on this link, download, accept the license agreement and for my Windows 8.1 operating system, 64 bit, I will download the exe file. So it is being downloaded here. Okay, after the download is completed, I'll just click on it. It will install the JRE latest version on my machine. I'll just click install. Okay, successfully installed Java. I'll close it. I will rerun all the rules again. So now it was passed. So that's why we are in the different page. Okay, now we are in the instance configuration page. Here you have to choose the instance default one or name instance. So as you can see, I already have a default instance installed in my machine. So we'll go with the named instance. So I will name it MS SQL MS SQL Server 2016 and click next. Uh, so here we reach the service configuration page. You can change the account name here, specify the passwords and choose to start or stop the service. I'll just leave it default. I'll just click next. Okay, so we're in the database engine configuration page now. Under server configuration page, so everything is same with the previous versions also. I'll choose the Windows authentication mode and add the current user. Okay, so here is your ID that you use to log into your Windows. And let's see data directories. Okay, so here the new thing that you see is number of TempDB files. So previously it used to create only one data file for TempDB. Now here you can specify the number of TempDB files. So in my laptop, I have four cores. So it has chosen four automatically. It says that the default value is eight or the number of cores, whichever is lower. So 
so my PC has four cores so it has chosen the four so it will create four data files for temdb and we'll see at the end of the installation how many files it has created uh, I'll go to the file stream tab uh, enable the file stream and click next okay so here is the final installation page and here you can again verify what all features you have chosen and just click on install after verifying everything this is going to take some time depending upon the speed of your PC and the features that you have chosen okay so finally SQL Server installed and it asks to restart it okay and you can check all the features that you had selected while installing okay, we will just close it and before restarting let's go and see what's in SSMS so I'll go to my start screen and check the programs SQL Server okay so here you can see SQL Server 2016 CTP2 uh, new program installed I'll just click on this okay so here is the connect to server window you can apply the server name here if you remember you can type it or you can browse for more expand the database engine so this is the default instance that we had installed earlier this is SQL Server 2014 and this is the named instance that we installed just now so I'll just select it and click OK and authentication is Windows authentication that we had already chosen click connect OK so now in the object explorer window you can see the instance name SQL Server the build version is 13.0.20 and my windows login name if you expand database you can see three databases that are installed by default DW configuration DW diagnostics DWQ let's see uh, if there are tables here okay so here compute node Okay, PDW okay looks like this is for polybase because compute node uh, these are related to Hadoop diagnostics tables and DWQ tables so I think these three databases are for PDW you should not delete them or make any changes to these if you are working with PDW okay I could not see any change here and let's see the system databases fine uh, let's create a new database here. I'll just create a new database. I'll give the name test man DB. I'll just click OK. So it created the database for us test man DB. I'll expand it. Okay, here you can see one thing that is external resources, data form, data sources, file formats, and programmability. Let's see if there is something. Okay, here is one. Uh, SP PDW that we just saw for uh, these tables the name is similar but the PW the schema here I'll expand the tables here in the tables you can see one system table and one external table file tables was a feature of SQL Server 2012 uh, but there are two features they have added system tables and external tables even if you click on tables new you will also see table memory optimized table this was added in SQL Server 2014 and file table was added in SQL Server 2012 so these two new features they have added system version table and external table both for polybase okay so this was about polybase SQL Server 2016 also comes up with the query store uh, let's see how we can enable the query store I'll just go to the new database I've created and go to the properties so here you can see a new option that is query store so here are few options you can choose to enable it you can change it to true here are the other properties that you can check and set based upon your usage and let's see how we can enable this via uh, SQL script so what I'll do is in the script component I'll choose script action to new query window instead of I'm clicking ok so it will create a new query for us to do the same thing to enable the query store on this database so I'll just click here Okay, and I'll, I'll just cancel it so it creates a new query so you can see here alter database the database name set query store is equal to on so if I fire this query here and expand it let me refresh it by these four options you can track 
how your queries are performing, what are the other statistics and it will keep log of all those statistics here. You can just right click on any one of them and see what does these look like. This is just a new database we have installed. We haven't run any queries. Otherwise, this would have given you a bar graph and you know the plants and all information. So the matrix you can choose from here, statistics you can choose from here. And there are a lot of options you can work upon. So these are the new features that SQL Server 2016 brings. We just saw two of them. There are there are many more. You can check in my blog. Uh, the query store that you just saw, the new feature in SQL Server 2016. So uh, what it does basically and these are the DMVs that you can use to query your query store. This is the GUI where you can see you, you can see the stats of your queries, how they are performing and to see the new features that SQL Server 2016 comes up with, you can just check this blog post where you can also download the SQL Server 2016 setup as I mentioned previously. So here are the new features that 2016 comes up with. Uh, thanks a lot for watching this video. Please let me know your comments. Thank you.